it was important for me to uh, finally accept my uh, leader and boss position. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for your time. We are getting quite close now to the release of Head Above Water. Exciting yes. times. Yeah. This is no longer your first rodeo, but nevertheless, uh, an important album, uh, the album coming out after the pandemic, an album that you can properly support with live shows. We've seen you already play on a lot of shows and I wanna come back yeah. to that, but these are exciting times and not just because it's the holiday season, uh, you're counting down the days. Uh, what? How are you experiencing this launch now? I'm really, really excited because we recorded the, the album uh, at the beginning of the year, so, the album is going to be released in January. It's going to be almost a year since we recorded the song. So for me, it's uh, it's been too long. <laughs> I want to have this album out soon and I, I can't wait for you to listen to all these tracks and to share this with our our crowd and our fan base. So I'm really, really excited. Can't believe it too so there are probably a whole lot of people that will uh, get introduced to you uh, with this album, especially here in North America. And mm -hmm. um, those people might be extremely surprised to find out that Laura Cox, who, you know, looks as American as they come and sounds as American as they come and dresses as if she was born in the 1960s in, the, in California, is in fact from France. Um, yeah, exactly. Is is that something that you still see that people like are really surprised about it? Because we don't in North America, we don't often see, especially in the heavier rock scene, that many bands from France break out. Obviously, we yeah. see Gojirai and so on, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of bands that are really big in France, but not necessarily outside of the borders of France. How yeah, uh, yeah. how have you experienced that? Yeah, I think France rock and roll is not so popular in France, so. There's this, and uh, and yeah, I, I remember when we were touring in Germany years ago, the um, the promoter from the venue where we were, we were playing said, "But your friends, it's unbelievable! It's the first time we're having a French rock band. We don't know this kind of music, and yeah. I thought you were American. So for me, I guess this is a compliment because that's uh, what I'm listening to. Uh, that's uh, what I, I grew up. That's uh, all I was listening to American music. So." If I can sound American for me, that I guess that's a compliment because I'm not finding inspiration in French mu music, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, all that said, um, you showed us some sneak peeks behind the scenes during the recording uh, process. You released some teaser videos. And then we do see that as stereotypical as possible that um, baguettes and croissants for breakfast still excite you. So. Uh, the French is there, there's no way around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when it comes to food, I think I'm really French. <laughs> I love the croissant. <laughs> As you should be, you should never be American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, I love this. Breakfast is maybe my favorite moment of the day, so you cannot take this away from me. <laughs> good, good. Now, what we also see in that video is that um, uh, you were laying down, I think, some rhythm tracks in that video, some of the, of the last little bit they had to record. Um, mm -hmm a very live setup in the recording studio or at yeah. the very least rehearsing mm -hmm. studio. Um, the album also sounds that way. Is that is that actually what happened? Has this been a much more live recording experience than uh, than in the past? Yes, a bit. every time it's a bit more spontaneous, a bit more live because I guess we're gaining experience and, yeah. uh, and now I feel more comfortable in the studio. Uh, the, the first time we recorded back in 2016 for the release of the first album in 2017, I was so stressed. I think this was the worst experience of my life. Being in the studio for the first album, it was just pressure and technical yeah. problems all the way. And uh, and uh, yeah, and we had to pay, and the studio was expensive, and we were adding more days and more days, and uh, it was really. I, I think I was uh, getting depressed with this recording, but yeah, yeah. Uh, with the, the recordings that are, uh, yeah, um, evolving, and now the third one, 
it went really, really well. I felt more comfortable with my team, more freedom on, on what I could use, what I, where I wanted to go. And, uh, and I think recording um, mostly live was really important and for a rock uh, record, uh, I think it's important to feel this live energy. Um, yeah. And because otherwise, I'm sure like uh, track by track, bass and then drums, then guitar, it can so sound great, but maybe not for rock and roll. If you want the the old school uh, vibe and can feel the the energy and the air in the room, and I for me this was um, this was important. Uh, we didn't record everything live. Um, I laid down the, um, the lead uh, guitar parts and the vocals afterwards, but the rhythm tracks, uh, guitars, bass and drums were recorded together. Yes. So You yeah. are also working with world-class people uh, today. Um, you're surrounded by a very professional team. Um, uh, people that have followed your career know that you started out in a very different way, in a very DIY way, recording videos for yeah. YouTube, and that mm -hmm. kind of accelerated everything. Looking mm -hmm. back at, at you know how that has, in, in only five, well, in, in maybe a little bit more than five years, but in, in, in still a very short time, uh, mm -hmm. you're still at the start of your career. You're by nowhere at the end of your career. Yeah, I hope so. um, <laughs> yeah no, for sure. But in that relative short time, you've gone from one end of the extreme to the all the way the other end of the extreme. Um, Maybe a bit of a double question. Do you then at times, even with such a perfect, well, it's such a professional team around you, do you miss that? total control ownership and do it yourself uh, mantra. Um, and then maybe as a, as, as a follow up to that, like what has been in that journey for you, the biggest uh -huh. like learning or aha moment uh, as you've been completely changing the way that you look at your art. So, yeah, I think, um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm surrounded, like you're saying, like a really, a really good and professional team. But what's good is that they're leaving me the freedom to do what I want. For example, my label is not imposing anything um, mm -hmm. regarding the music. Uh, I, I can come up with the, of course, they, <laughs> they maybe they wouldn't follow if I was releasing a R&B or electro uh, right. uh, uh, record, you know, all of a sudden out of nowhere. But they trust me and I'm really free um, with what I'm doing. So this is a, this is the best of both worlds, you know, mm -hmm. both, both worlds being surrounded by a professional team but still being able to do what you want and i have the i'm lucky to have that so i don't and for me there's not i uh, yeah i'm still doing a lot uh, by myself and it, it feels good you know we still have a we don't have a huge crew when we're going on tour for example still renting a van still we don't have big tour buses but uh, still playing uh, clubs also big festivals but sometimes uh, small rock clubs and it feels great. I, I love the energy of a packed uh, rock club. So yeah, for now I feel like I'm exactly where I should be. I, I really enjoy this. Not, not uh, we are, We're moving forward um, and I, I feel really comfortable uh, right now. And, um, and yeah, just that I realized along the years that uh, it was important for me to uh, finally accept my uh, leader and boss position because um, <laughs> I think that's what I realized recently. Maybe I should have realized this uh, earlier, but um, the maybe the pandemic uh, made me realize things because I spent a lot of time on my own reflecting right. on what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. And in the end, I thought, okay, the project uh, has my name. And I shouldn't be, I shouldn't listen to everybody saying, I know you have to record this, I know do it this way, this way. And being a woman surrounded by uh, mostly a team of older men, sometimes it's hard to say no. In the past, I accepted a lot of things. And when I look back, I regret that it's, it's too late now, but I wish I could have said nicely, no, sorry, I don't want to do this. And now I think what I realized recently is that I can do this, I can be nice, but still say no. And, uh, and right now, the dynamic of work we have in the team is really good. Um, everybody's on the same page. They're following me. Uh, they're proposing ideas without imposing. Uh, yeah. There's room for talking. And yeah, I really like the dynamic we have right now. And I'm finally the boss of the project. Yeah. So it feels good in a way. Down, down, down. 
I usually interview bands that are very much on the heavy side of rock or you know heavy yeah, metal. Um, when I uh, uh, when I mentioned to people that oh I'm going to interview Laura, uh, there were uh, journalists from heavy metal magazines that were like oh yeah best show I saw in 2021 uh, okay. or 2022, and then cool. we also saw you obviously play in Hellfest. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. The it hasn't been a surprise to you that this the, the 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 metal scene has embraced you so quote unquote um, easily i don't think i would play to a, a total metal festival because hellfest started i think initially be uh, they started really hard rock and metal oriented yeah. and um within uh, like along the years they kind of soften a bit and um and now i i've seen ZZ Top there, I've seen yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Black Smoke, I, I've seen Leonard Skinner, uh, no, I, I didn't see them, but they, they played there. Yeah, and I so was there, the end, 2012. Yeah. Ah, ah, okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, and 2019, no, yeah, I'm they not came sure back. Yeah, they came yeah, back, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. but uh, they, now they're booking uh, bands that are not really hard rock anymore, so that's why I was kind of uh, not really uh, stressed about this, even if we're not really, really hard, uh, hard rock. And yeah. more classic rock, um, I, it's okay because Hellfest. And I know that the the style of uh, is re very wide. You know, the, yes. there's a wide range of uh, style going from a, a southern rock to a thrash metal or <laughs> things that I cannot even name because I don't know yeah. enough. But so I think yeah, and I think metalheads are very open-minded. So mm -hmm. as long as they have an uh, electric guitar and good riffs, I think they're okay. And beer. <laughs> are you with us, Polar Rock? If you forget about all the all the amazing places that you have played already, like what would be that ultimate place on on the wish list, and and why is that the Red Rock Theater in Denver? Um, I wish I I could play there, but um, if we're staying more realistic, I'm not sure. I used to say Hellfest was my dream, so I did this. But I would say, okay, I would my my second dream would be okay. I would play i would love to play in hellfest again but maybe you know a bit later in the day so this yeah, is the yeah, second yeah, yeah. second goal um or um yeah i think uh, i don't know and like all the download festivals all around the world uh, they used to have this in paris but um it's not uh happening anymore but yeah like uh, i think i would uh, my dream would be to to play the the big rock festivals all over the world but we we've played uh, at some uh, but mostly, yeah, we stayed. We stayed in Europe. I, I wish. I really hope that next year we can visit uh, the U.S. and Australia and do do something there because I'm sure there's something to do. No Final question to wrap us up. Something different. Um, you know, you were eight years somebody that was able to, you know, with modern tools, you know, take your passion and turn that into a career through the mm -hmm. work, you know, through the, the platform of YouTube. Um, I obviously, you know, because this is also going on YouTube, uh, and so I'm, I'm well aware of everything that goes on behind the scenes. A lot of people will look at that and go like, oh, somebody plays some guitar in front of a camera and, you know, you can get famous on YouTube. You know that there's a lot more to it uh, than that. Yeah, um, sure. and, and starting a, a music career through YouTube takes just as much uh, dedication and work. Um, uh, can, can you share a little bit um, to wrap us up a little bit about that experience, yeah. what that has been like for you, the, uh, uh -uh. the the focus and investment you had to make? So I yeah I started originally on YouTube I think uploading in 2008, and at that time and I think that's why it worked. It was because nothing was planned. I I was 17. I was still studying. I was not aiming to have a career in this. Or oh, I wish I, I had, but I I, yeah, I, yeah. I would. But I wasn't even thinking about this because for me this was too too much of a dream. So I was trying to focus on my studies and at the same time really um, passionate about learning guitar and really motivated by other players posting on on YouTube. Um, but at the time YouTube was still recent, like maybe two or three years old. Yeah. So there weren't many people doing this, and I think I, it was a mix, so it, it worked. Even if I wasn't uh, expecting anything, it was just a challenge to get some feedback and get more motivation and keep on yeah. playing. It was a way to have fun, you know, and playing guitar. And in the end, I think it worked because uh, people could feel that this was spontaneous and not someone um, that wanted to... Uh, 
to uh, attract people and get more views and subscribers because now I feel like this is a race to who has the the most who can get the and at the time you couldn't I think you couldn't sponsor the post and you couldn't put money I, everything was just yeah, natural yeah. so I think I just happened to do this at the right time without even thinking about this and um, and it's a mix of yeah right timing luck and hard work I guess even if yeah. I uh, yeah I did this uh, just uh, because I love guitar I love playing guitar so I think that's why people people loved my videos and then it led me to my life project and I'm really happy now with the balance that I have in my life um, I think I kind of neglected YouTube these past years because I I tended to think uh, okay I have a life project we are touring this is my priority because this is the real life the, the touring life the band the recording albums but I think I shouldn't neglect YouTube because I, I don't know I thought with all the new social media YouTube would disappear but it's still here because this is a kind of a, the only what the only platform in this um, in this category. So even the young yeah. people are still uploading, maybe with more fancy editing than my than my videos. <laughs> but it's not dead, so I should really uh, yeah uh, put yeah, more yeah. work and efforts, and I and that's uh, one of my uh, good resolutions for next year: more awesome. YouTube videos. <laughs> Well, on that wonderful note, Laura, that we will see uh, hopefully uh, a lot more content from you as well as live shows um, and obviously the new album coming out in January. Uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And yeah. uh, we hope to see you on that North American tour very soon. I hope so. so certainly next year, crossing my finger, we, my fingers, uh, we should, we're, we're going to try to find a booker there because we don't have any booker for the, for the US, the Canada, but I'll definitely try my best. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.